I'll start off by just explaining briefly how we have a blasphemy law, because a lot of people aren't aware of the background to it. When the Constitution was passed in 1937, <coughs> it included a clause saying that blasphemy is an offence which is punishable in accordance with law. So technically it's the Constitution that makes blasphemy an offence. It's quite unusual to have crime in the Constitution, but we have this crime written into our Constitution as a limitation on the clause on freedom of expression. Now, the, it was put into the statute book, the part of it being punishable in accordance with law was put into the statute book in the 1960s. And it was inserted as part of the Defamation Act when it was being passed. Charlie Hoy was the then Minister for Justice that was putting it through. And the only time that it was tested, which was after one of the divorce referendums, somebody claimed that uh, a cartoon in the independent newspapers was blasphemous. The courts found that they couldn't prosecute the offence because the legislation didn't define what the offence consisted of. So essentially they said, we don't know what the offence is. They said there, there was an old common law definition of uh, blasphemy, but that wouldn't have survived the uh, transition to the new constitution, and particularly the, the removal of the special place of the Catholic Church, because common law blasphemy was about protecting the, the established religion. So we were then left in a situation where we had a law of blasphemy on the books in accordance with the Constitution, but everyone knew that it couldn't be enacted. So it was in effect a dead law. Coming up to 2009, the Oireachtas was updating the Defamation Act itself, the entire act, nothing to do with blasphemy, just was updating the entire Defamation Act. And everyone assumed that as part of that, that they would take the opportunity to just remove this dead law, the part about blasphemy being an offence. But instead, at the last moment, uh, the Minister for Justice, a new Minister for Justice, because there were three Ministers for Justice during the period that that was going through the Neuroctus, uh, Dermot O'Hearn became Minister for Justice at the last moment and decided instead to add in a definition of blasphemy in order to make it enforceable. <coughs> And so from then, 10 years ago, we had a new blasphemy law. We are the only Western country to pass a new blasphemy law in the 21st century. And the definition is essentially to say anything that's grossly abusive or insulting in relation to matters held sacred by any religion, thereby causing outrage among a substantial number of adherents of that religion. And then there are various um, safeguards built into it. But the whole thing is a legal nightmare because you know, there's so, so much ambiguity in it. Uh, and uh, we don't know what would happen if it was tested. The only time that it was p potentially tested was a, a complaint made about Stephen Fry. And what that, uh, when that was tested, the police actually found that he had passed, sorry, I'm saying change my microphone, sorry. When the Stephen Fry case was taken, the police effectively found that it had passed the first test of blasphemy, which was that it was grossly abusive or insulting in relation to matters held sacred by, a, 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 in this case, the Christian religion. Uh, but they found that it didn't pass the second test, which is thereby causing outrage amongst a substantial number of adherents of that religion. So they said, we haven't found uh, enough outrage, and therefore we're not taking it any further. Now that may sound on the one hand, comical, uh, but there is a serious dimension to it, because effectively what that is finding means is that if there was, say for example, another uh, Danish cartoon controversy here, and somebody went to the police and said, uh, I want a blasphemy case taken against this, the only thing the police could say is, well, we haven't seen sufficient outrage. And the last thing that you want to do in a situation like that is incentivize people to show outrage. You know, we need to be incentivising people to behave more proportionally when somebody says something that they find offensive. So that's essentially where we are now after 10 years after that, uh, the law was passed, um, we have finally got a referendum to remove it, assuming people uh, in sufficient numbers come out and, and vote yes. Now there are three reasons that it's important to vote yes. Um, I'm going to talk about the two national reasons and then Jane will talk about our international human rights obligations and the impact internationally. But the two national reasons are, first of all, the obvious one, it's silly, it's anachronistic, it's, it's obsolete. Um, it reflects the Ireland of 1937, 
when we had a very different perspective on human rights. The uh, Catholic Church accepts that it's obsolete. The Protestant Church has accepted that it's obsolete. Uh, the, every body that has been established to examine the Constitution has recommended that it be removed. That goes back to 1991, the Law Reform Commission, the Constitutional Review Group in 1996, chaired by T.K. Whitaker, the All Party Rockets Committee in 2008 on the Constitution, um, up to and including the, the recent Constitutional Convention. So it's essentially obsolete, um, and the uh, argument that it uh, uh, isn't being used so why not leave it there is actually an argument for undermining the integrity of the legal system because why would you have a law if it's not being used? But in practice, by default, it is being used because even though, this is the second reason nationally that it's important to, to remove it, because even though it hasn't formally been, been used against anybody, we know from direct experience and the National Union of Journalists have said the same thing, that media outlets are choosing to self-censor themselves in, just in case they get involved in a, a blasphemy case. I've been personally told before, uh, live broadcast television and radio interviews, make sure that you don't say anything that contravenes the blasphemy law. We've had articles that have been submitted to uh, print publications that have been either edited or refused on the basis of concerns that conservative readers might find in blasphemies. So media outlets, and in fairness to media outlets, you know, they exist to run newspapers or to run radio stations. They don't exist to change the law of the country. So they're just going to go, well, we're not going to touch that. You know, we're not interested in getting into even the possibility of a court case and a 25,000 euro fine. So those are the two reasons um, nationally that it's important to remove it. It is obsolete and it is harmful. It reflects the Ireland of the 1937 of 1937 and, and it causes the media of the Ireland of 2018 to self-censor themselves.